What is up, creator? It is awfully good to see you. I produced two videos. One was best recording settings for OBS Studio, and another one was the OBS countdown timer for DJs video. And I think I owe it to you to discuss some clarifications, some mistakes that I've made, and to sort of rehash some things that need to be said that I've sort of omitted in error. So in the spirit of education, I want to go back, revisit these videos and discuss these elements so that they are clear and easy to understand so that you get the most value out of this channel. Let's get some. Electrify your online presence with live streaming. Okay, let's dig into the video I made called Best Recording Settings for OBS Studio. Here I am in the program. If I go to Settings, go into Output, select Recording, make sure that the Output Mode is set to Advanced. I want to talk about the recording format. Initially, I recommended either FLV or MP4. FLV is not a good choice because it only allows you to use one audio track, is what I'm told. It's just an old, lousy format. If you're gonna have a live stream that you plan on doing for like an hour or so, your best bet is MKV because then you can have multiple audio tracks. And if you lose the stream, you still can play the video. But when you bring it into your editor, your editor is not going to be able to read it. So how do you do that? Well, that's where the remux comes in. And the word remux means not necessarily resaving the file as a different format, it just changes the container. So it's real fast and real easy. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'll, I'll make sure this is set to MKV, I'll hit apply, hit okay. I've already saved a file as a MKV and it's ready for remuxing. So if I go up here to file, go to remux recordings, it's like a little separate program that resides inside of OBS. I'll click it, I'll clear all this stuff out of here real quick. Go into where my MKV file is stored, which is on my downloads folder, okay? You can drag it right in, and it will change that file extension to MP4, and it will save it in the same location as where the MKV file resides, which is in the downloads folder. Now watch how fast this thing changes it over to MP4. Watch. Boom. That was like maybe a second, probably even half a second. So it's really, really simple to get these things switched over to MP4, and there it is on my system. So here it is here, right there, boom, got it. The takeaway here is FLV is not the best choice. MKV is what you should be using just in case OBS crashes, and you want to remux to MP4 so that it's usable in any video editor. A fantastic creator called Warmom chimed in in comments and let me know that the best bit rates for those who are using NVIC. So if you go into the encoder here and you have a GPU that is a 10 series or more and you select NVIC, you get a pull down in the ray control that allows you to select CQP. This is the best selection. There is a parameter that shows up when you make that selection called the CQ level. I believe the default is 20 for OBS Studio. This is not a bad selection. What we're doing here is we're balancing compression and making sure that you don't get a massive file size if you reduce that compression down to one. If you're interested in seeing what you get when you select a CQ level of one, which is almost no compression, and a compression level of 30, I wanna direct you to this uh, video over here his name is, what is his name? What is his name? Fantastic video. Here it is here. I1 Mods made a video where he, he gives you a comparison between CQ30 and CQ1. Great video. Check that out and you will understand what you're dealing with when you make those selections. But in most cases, you're probably going to want to select anywhere around 15, which would give you a larger file size to 20, which would be a little bit less of a file size, and you'd have almost lossless clarity. Okay, so that's great for people who have powerful graphics cards. What if you don't, and you have to select X264 as the encoder? Well, what Warmom suggests is that you select the rate control of CRF, and then it comes down to the question of what kind of compression do you add? It defaults, I believe, to one for CRF, which means there is no compression. 
I wasn't able to find any examples online in regards to quality and what these compression settings would do to the quality, so I decided that I would make my own. So I have uh, Planet Side 2, and I'm going to record some video so that you can see the effects of the compression yourself. Uh, War Mom again recommends 14. He claims that that's pretty close to lossless, so we'll take a look and see physically if what he says is actually accurate. Let's do that right now. Here we go. Well, the takeaways are that CRF30 creates a very, very small file size. And so if you're looking to have a live stream that's over two hours, that may be your choice. You will have to naturally sacrifice some resolution because I noticed that when comparing CRF1 to CRF30 in 100% scale, you could just make out that it was a little bit more fuzzy for CRF30 when compared to one. In regards to CRF14 being compared to one, you really couldn't make out the difference when you blew, blew it up to 500%. So based on what War Mom was saying, that CRF14 was almost like lossless, potentially actually looks like it could be true when you compare it to CR1, CRF1 to CFR14. So overall, I think War Mom is correct, and I really appreciate the comments that come in from the viewers at this channel. It means everything to me, and I'm not afraid to let you know when I'm wrong. I mean, that's the bottom line. It's not about being perfect. It's about making sure that the real information and that the truth comes out. And I really appreciate you guys for chiming in and, and let me know what you know. And it's really valuable to us all. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now in the video titled OBS Countdown Timer for DJs, I said this. The only downside to scale is that the scale is being created from the upper left hand corner and growing out this way. That's a little bit funky. There's, There's no, no other workaround as far as I can see at the moment. moment. Maybe, Maybe this will get, get fixed, fixed down the road. So as you can plainly see, the information that I provided in this video for that section is not accurate. Thanks to Kyle Stock who made a comment shortly after the video was posted. He said, hey Scott, if you go into the edit transform menu of a source and select the bounding box, to no bounds and positional alignment to center, then the scale filter should be affected from the center of the image and not the top left like the dog example showed. And so what we'll do is create it right now and show you what he's talking about. It's pretty cool. Okay, this pertains to the OBS Move Transition plugin. All you have to do is Google that word and you'll find the page. There'll be a white download button. Click it, you'll be presented with a pop-up. Select your operating system, click the button. It will download the zip file, expand it, go inside, look at the executable, double click that. It will install the files into the OBS file structure for you automatically shut down obs bring it back up and you'll have the plugin running here is an example of the dog in the tutorial that i was talking about the song is here if i right click on it go into filters there's the audio move parameters i've got it set to a meter type of peak true base value is one factor 20 easing is pretty high and i've got it set to transform scale okay so I'll close that if I hit the play button you'll see that the dog is moving from the upper left hand corner and expanding this way we want it to expand equally from the center so what Kyle said was that you click the image right click go into transform edit transform and select positional alignment of center and then select bounding box type of no bounds. Hit close, and if we hit the play button now, it should work. Just like he said, the capability was there the whole time, 
And here I am blaming, you know, subtly blaming Exeldro for the problem, which is absolutely not true. Exeldro, I apologize. The functionality was there the whole time. I want to thank you guys again for all the help that you've contributed in comments. It means a ton to me and it helps everyone out who comes in and checks out this content. If you would like to see the videos that I'm talking about, the lower one will be the best settings for recording a video on OBS. And the second one is the video on how to make an OBS countdown timer for DJs that involves music visualization, which means that you're moving sources automatically to the beat of music. I will see you over there. Best wishes, stay strong, and keep fighting. Later.